Hello, 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 Instagram, hello, Facebook. It is February, Wednesday, February 9th. I wanted to say March there for a second. Even after I said February, I wanted to say March. So good morning, Marcus Giuliano here. Um, I have a question here from somebody who is wondering about the restaurant industry. Um, so I'm going to answer that question. Um, I am on Facebook and I am on Instagram. Let me know you're out there. Just uh, drop a comment, say hello. And uh, this is uh, a business topic here. I'm posting a lot more business content lately. Um, selling a lot more books lately too. A lot more books have been going out the door like on a consistent basis, which is great. Uh, 50 mistakes that business owners make. You can go to 50mistakes.com, uh, click the link and get a free book. It'll get sent right to you. So here's a question uh, from somebody named Stacy. Uh, question, I own a bar restaurant in a small rural town, population 2,400 people. The only marketing that really works here is Facebook and Instagram. The only, I'm going to repeat this, the only marketing that really works here is Facebook and Instagram. We do daily specials and I post those every day at 9 a.m. Our customers know when they post and look for them. They know when the posts are up and look for them. If we have events during the week or weekend, I will schedule a post around 1 p.m. of that day or the day before. There are some other businesses in town that I see them posting five to six times a day on their business page and will share it to every surrounding page. Sometimes it's gonna be up to 10 other pages I follow and that's just me. That seems like a lot to me. Uh, I am so worried that I'm bombarding people's Facebook and Instagram. Is if anybody is solely using Facebook, Instagram for marketing, how often and what time of the day do you post? So this is a great question. This is a fantastic question. Um, if you follow my restaurant account, Aroma Time, we post as much as we possibly can. I mean, we don't stop posting. Um, but I think the most important thing to do is, is and how I answered Stacey was, I, I said, well, what are your analytics? What do your analytics show? If you own a Facebook page, if you have a Facebook page, you can go on and check your analytics and see your reach over the last 28 days, see your engagements and see your likes. And you should know like where you should be at. You should be monitoring this and you should be like, okay, I know that I should be at 20,000 reach every 28 days. And if I'm going down to 10,000, I'm not high enough. If I'm up to 30,000, I'm doing a fantastic job. So you should know this number like that. Just like you know, should know your food costs and your labor costs like that. You should know what your Facebook is reaching um, and be able to gauge, gauge from starting from there. Now, as far as posting once a day, um, when the pandemic hit, you could have posted 10 times a day. People were home. People were bored. They were working from home. They needed entertainment. You had an open audience to post 10 times a day and get full engagement. As people started going back to work, and lives, uh, you know, we start doing other things like going back to baseball games, taking our kids everywhere. These are, um, all these things started happening slowly. We started losing the attention of people on these social media platforms because they had now preoccupied. But when the pandemic hit, you had everybody's full attention and you could have posted away. But once you know your, once you know your reach, your mean reach, so your average reach of where you are. Now, keep in mind, let's say you have an average reach every 28 days of 20,000, right? You you want to improve that and bring, just like how you want to improve your sales, you want to keep improving your reach, improving your reach, improving your reach. So I'd be interested um, to see, Stacey, what her reach actually is every month and how she can keep improving that reach. Now, the time of the day you post is crucial. Um, she's saying she's posting at 9 a.m., if she has a lunch crowd, um, then 9 a.m. for lunch specials, I don't know. When you get to work and you punch the clock and you get there at 9 o'clock, are you going to start looking for lunch specials as early as 9 a.m.? I personally don't think so. I think 10.30, 11 o'clock for lunch specials, might the timing might be perfect because people are going to go on and see like who's posting, who's posting this, this, or this. Um, dinner specials, we... We uh, have strategized. Jamie's doing her Facebook Live at four o'clock every day, and it's a cocktail. Because at four o'clock, you're thinking about winding the day down from work. She does her cocktail live at four to five, four third, four o'clock, four thirty, and we feel that's perfect timing for the audience to engage and say, "Oh my gosh!" And let me order dinner and let me get a drink. 
Let me send them. We have a lot of people that order. We have a lot of people that do takeout. They come sit at our bar. They're doing takeout, and they go, I want the drink you made today, Jamie. Whatever Jamie made today, I want. They don't care what it is. She just made it on Facebook, and there you go. So timing those posts are are very, very crucial. Um, and as far as how much, folks, we're in the restaurant industry. People are always eating, and we have food. Food is an amazing content for restaurants. So for an amazing content for any business, right? Food, food really drives the world, right? So if you've got good food or good pictures of your food, good pictures of your food, all right, then you should be blasting them out there, right? You know, literally a restaurant should have a photographer come in every three to six months, pay them the three, four, 500 bucks, trade them out, do whatever, get professional photos taken at least twice a year, have all your dishes put out, um, do staff training that day, have the photographer there ta- you know, taking photos of all the pictures, have them leave that day with four, 500, 600 photos in a Google Drive folder for you that you can just share like crazy. Now, do you need to hire a photographer? People are saying, well, I can't really afford them. Folks, your iPhone 10, your iPhone 12, your iPhone 13, those are extremely powerful cameras like massively powerful cameras, and so are the Androids. I don't know, I'm not in lingo with the Androids stuff, Samsung or whatever they are. But these smartphones are amazing. Like all these pictures I take now when I go visit wineries and I blow these 30 by 40 massive pictures up are taken with my with my iPhone. They're all taken with my iPhone and they're crystal clear. They are amazing. So learn how to use portrait mode. Learn how to do different angles. Learn. One thing I learned from one photographer was put the dish on the floor and stand above it and shoot down, especially if you have, if you have wood flooring or something. Really, really cool. We had a lot of pictures taken like that. Um, get a cutting board. Put it on the ground. Put your plate on top of it. Stand on the plate and shoot directly down at it. And Aaron, you can get, you can get some really cool stuff. Sometimes people take the phone and they put it on top of the dish. And you see the shadow of your of your phone, right? So you have to hold the phone back. And then zoom in on, on Apple and iPhones. You have the two and a half time zoom. Hold the phone way up so you can't get the shadow on your dish and then shoot it. Shoot it from an angle. Enlarge it. Um, get, get, get up close with it. Make sure the protein is always in the front. Um, you don't want to take a picture of, of, of let's, let's say it's a steak dish with broccoli and, and a baked potato, for example. You wouldn't want to turn the plate where the potato's in the front and you're taking this side angle and you see the potato before you see the steak. You're not selling the potato. You're selling the steak is what you're selling. So um, there's a whole, there's, you can get lots of pointers online on YouTube on how to take food photos with, with smart photography. We have a whole course on it on our platform, Restaurant Growth Secrets University. There's a whole course in there on how to take better photos with your iPhone and, and how to what they're going to be blown up to and all that kind of stuff based on each phone. It's a little old. I have to update the t- iPhone 12 and 13 on there. Every phone comes out with just a better camera, right? So um, post away, share away. But here's one of the most important things people don't do. This is my very first Forbes article I wrote a few years ago. The one lacking thing on, on social media, people don't listen and engage. Listen and engage are the two most important things. So you should have a set of hashtags that you follow. So for me, I'm near a state park. I follow hashtag Sam's Point, hashtag Sam's Point Preserve, hashtag Ellenville, because I live in Ellenville, hashtag Lippman Park, hashtag Renegades. That's the, um, the mountain bike park over here, the best in the state. I follow all these hashtags. When people post something at Sam's Point, we go in and comment and say, great day for a hike. Great waterfall. Now, do I do that personally? No, I have somebody who does that for me. At a specific time of the day, on the weekends, we do it at 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock because people are out hiking on a trail. They're out here at Sam's Point, Sam's Point, Minnewaska. They're out hiking, and when they see a restaurant comment on their post at 3 o'clock, they're like, oh, a restaurant. That's cool. They're five minutes from here. They're 10 minutes from here. Who's hungry, gang? Who's hungry? Who wants a beer? Here's a craft, right? Who wants a beer? Who wants a burger? Who wants... So that right there is more important than actually posting and flooding your stuff. You can actually reverse that and follow these follow these hashtags and engage with these hashtags, especially on Instagram. Super easy to do. So there's an event, an event center next to you. If there's anything going on next to you that have that has these popular hashtags, you should be following those hashtags. And you follow just like you follow an account. 
So you type in the hashtag, it pops up and it says follow. You hit follow. So every time that topic's posted, you do it. If you're into wine, Italian wine, you follow hashtag Italian wine. If you're into vintage Porsches, hashtag vintage Porsche. And you follow all these and engage with those people that are posting on it. It's your topic. It's yours. And you've this is such an old thing to do as far back as Twitter, the early Twitter days. You could follow these hashtags and engage with people that are talking about that specific topic. And if you're selling that product, go in and educate them. Go in and drop a comment. Go in and tell them, hey, great choice on wine, um, you know. Great, we used to say, great day for a hike, great waterfall. We love that waterfall, great pick, you know. And people are like, oh wow, and we get so many people off the mountain into the restaurant from that. So that's another very, very important thing when it comes. Thanks for everybody tuning in. I see Matt in. Hey, Matt, how's it going? Um, Matt says, uh, the question is, and how often is what is the post? Restaurants need to stop posting about themselves and start using social media to engage customers and start conversations, right? Starting conversations is great. Um, and it can be something simple like, like, are you ready for the snowstorm today? You ready for today's snow, to the snowstorm this weekend? And people are going to say, yes, no, yes, no, this weekend to the funny person. Well, I live in Florida, so I don't have to worry about it. That is non-food, and it's so engaging, right? Are you ready for the snowstorm? Um, and now, if you turn that around... Uh, not turn around, but take to the next step and add a chat bot in there. A chat bot, um, like man, a Manny Chat chat bot, where it comments back and takes over uh, on, 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 on your sequence of messages for you, where it says, hey, John, I see you're ready for the storm. Hey, um, before the storm comes this weekend, how about, um, how about saving five bucks on a, on a burger at my restaurant? If you want to take that order, hit yes, and I'll send you the offer on email or on Messenger. It's a whole sequence you can go through to bring people into your database. Um, another great one is you put up a picture of wings. Um, how do you eat your wings? And, you know, you just show different levels of, of either heat, a different level. Some people, you know, eat everything right off the bone. Some people leave a little bit. Steak is a great one. How do you like your steak cooked? Rare, medium rare, uh, medium, medium well. And then the well done is like something funny like unfriend me or something. So... Um, you put questions up like that, and those are super, super engaging. Um, I know accounts that just post a picture of their daily specials every single day, and it gets boring. It gets really boring to see a menu without any food pictures, and it's every day like clockwork. Here's today's specials. They post up, and it's just like, oh, man. Like, I really have to like that restaurant and really be a regular at that restaurant to be waiting for the picture of the menu to come up every day. I you know I really got to really like you. I'm probably not going to that kind of post is not probably not going to get any new customers. It's not going to get any new customers. A post of a picture of a dish that people start commenting on like I can't wait to get this. I had it last night. It was amazing. Then other friends are going to see those posts. The conversation's going to start happening and then they're going to say, "Oh, where is this restaurant?" Nobody nobody's going to look at a picture of a menu every day. And comment and say, "Oh, I can't wait to try the, you know, the beef and broccoli. I can't wait to try you know, the, the smoked meatloaf." Um, and all your friends are saying, "Where is this restaurant? That looks amazing." What are you looking at? You're looking at print words. You're not looking at anything that's engaging. So that's super important too. Um, I really encourage people not to do that. You do that sometimes. Say, "Hey, we got a bunch of new specials. Post a couple of pictures and then post a link to the specials." Or post a picture of the specials in the sequence of the post there. On Instagram, you can add up to what, like 10 photos. On Facebook, you just add photos away. You add four or five photos in the picture picture of your menu. So, um, And if you're putting a picture of a menu on, folks, take a really clean picture of it. Don't take it with a shadow in it. Don't take it with edges that are on. In fact, on your computer, take a snapshot image of the menu itself so it's clean. Make sure that there's no, make sure that Microsoft or Grammarly hasn't made any suggestion changes. Like, so you have words underlined that are red to change. Uh, that's right there. It's just, it's, it's, it's image. It's image. It's all about your image. I see people that post stuff that snapshot stuff and uh, from the computer. And it's like, they didn't do three or four corrections. And even if the correction isn't needed, you hit dismiss and you get rid of that red line. Totally get rid of that red line. So people don't have to look at it and be like, that red line pops out. Um, and it's like, well, what are they doing there? Like, do they know how to spell or this, that, and they're, they're focused more on the red line if the word's correct or not than what you're actually saying. So, all right, folks. 
Um, that is it for today. Um, when is enough is enough. Um, you know, good content. There's never enough good content. Let's put it that way. So you could actually monitor your, like I said at the beginning, you monitor your, your, your 28 day reach and see what direction it's going. The best thing to do is go back and monitor all of your posts. You go back and take the last two weeks and you look at which ones got the best views organically. And that's the stuff you want to keep posting again. Not the same post, but those the type of content you want to keep posting again. If it's a contest, contests are great. And there's there's a program you can automatically pick the winner from your contest. It's uh, it's it's really really great. Um, so if you have 30, 40, 50, 100 people, a thousand people comment on it, this program automatically picks the winner and posts it for you. It does everything for you. Automates it. Does everything. Tags a person, and then they're the winner, right? So if you're giving away a fifty dollar gift card, if you're giving away a um, free burger free dinner if you're giving away burgers for a year if you give away burgers for a year contest and really do that properly you will add thousands of new people to your database that post will be an amazing post like you put ad money on stuff like that because that stuff is just so powerful for building your database so powerful for building your building your database so um, but monitor that go down look at the best posts and keep reproducing those posts and you'll see if you're posting pictures of food you're posting pictures of food and then you're posting pictures of your menu you'll see that the food pictures get far more reach so now you know to do more food pictures and you know now then you'll see what food pictures are getting the most views is it the soup is it the steak is it the burger and you can really monitor it very into your analytics folks the restaurant industry is all about analytics 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 I interviewed somebody yesterday from my podcast brand new brand new to the restaurant industry four years ago and he goes, analytics saved me. Analytics literally saved me. I would run reports on everything and understand where everything was going. Every He called it covering manhole. Every nickel was a manhole. Just keep covering stuff up. And you just you know you look at it, you analyze it, and you keep, you know, stop the bleeding. And he goes, if something wasn't working, I changed it. My food cost wasn't working, I changed prices. But he was so analytical. And a lot of people go and get into the industry, and they're just like, yeah, you know, yeah. I'm going to price my burger 10 bucks this guy down the street's 950 without ever doing running a food cost. And I'm like, "Whoa, whoa. You're not the place down the street. Um that's not how you that's not how you Well, you know, it's the same size. I'm like, it's not the same beef, it's not the same rent, it's not it's not the same payroll, it's not the same electricity, it's not the same anything. Your job is to charge what you need to charge to cover your expenses and then perceive the value of it by doing the proper marketing after that but people think people think marketing is undercutting when when you resort to your marketing your main marketing or even marketing in general to undercut the restaurant next to you in price there's problems there's big problems so there's nothing wrong with competing on price there's nothing wrong with having great sales great deals but do not base your marketing on hey place next to me is doing this for five bucks i'm going to undercut them at four for the same exact product um so that doesn't work when the pandemic hit we lowered all of our tap beers i didn't care when anybody was was charging for tap beer i was when the pandemic first said i didn't know if we were gonna be open so i was like i got kegs of beer here let's just unload them let's do every every craft beer line we have for five bucks and people started buying it like crazy like crazy and then after after the pandemic slowed down a little bit and we could eat uh, in June that year, we could start eating in outside at restaurants and stuff. Um, I would bump up the prices, bump up the prices. And I kept one, be one at them for five bucks for the longest time until just last week, two weeks ago. And we sold a ton of this beer, but it wasn't based on what my neighbors were doing for marketing. It was based because it, people really loved it and I was making money on it still. And it was a great marketing tool. And I didn't care if anybody else was even serving that beer. No, 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 I didn't even know if anybody else was serving that beer. So... All right, folks, thanks for tuning in. That is it for now. Have a great day. Thanks for tuning in on Instagram and on Facebook. Really appreciate that. Go to 50mistakes.com. Share it with a restaurant owner if you're not a restaurant owner. And um, that's it. All right.